Walter, you know me by now. I'm obsessed with cosmos, consciousness, God. And when I look for ways to understand all of them, one of the recurrent themes is causation. Are things related but uncaused? What's the cause of it? We're always asking why, 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 why. So I need to dig down and see what is causation. And physicists, philosophers have different views. But I want to ask you about mental causation. What does that mean, and can that help us understand causation in general? Well, the real question is whether something non-physical, like a mental state or a choice, can cause something physical, like body moving through the air. Uh, and that's a puzzle. It's a puzzle partly because people have the wrong view of causation. They have what I call the pool ball model of causation. For one thing to cause another is like the cue ball hitting the eight ball mm -hmm. and knocking it into the pocket. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's a, a causal relation of one sort, but it's not the only sort. For example, in that type of causation, the pool, the cue ball has to actually hit the eight ball. It has to come in contact with it. But wait a minute. The moon causes the tides. The moon doesn't touch the tides. So you don't always have to have contact. But at least the moon's a physical thing. But wait a minute. The temperature can cause me to sweat. But what's the temperature? Temperature is average kinetic energy. It's not any particular molecule. It's an average. And an average is an abstract thing. So we've got to get used to the idea that, sure, one pool ball can cause another pool ball, but there's a lot of different kinds of causation besides that simple pool ball model. OK. So I, I, I'll follow you there. But still, how can something non-physical, mental, cause things in the physical world to happen? Exactly. So I'll give you an example to try to illustrate what I take to be the primary model. Okay. You want a Coke. Say, Walter, can I have a dollar? And I say, sure. And I reach into my pocket, and I look, and there are four quarters, and there are two half dollars. And I say, here are the four quarters. And you take the four quarters, and you buy your Coke, and you say thank you. Now, what caused you to say thank you? Was it that I gave you four quarters? No. Because you would have thanked me even if I'd given you the two half dollars. So what really caused you to say thank you was that I gave you a dollar. OK? But a dollar is an abstract thing. A dollar can be a piece of paper. It can be four quarters. It can be two half dollars. It can be 10 dimes. It can be 20 nickels. It can take all kinds of forms. So what's really doing the causal work is that you got a dollar, not that you got those particular four quarters on that particular occasion. So the causal relation can occur because of an abstract entity like a dollar, an abstract functional entity like a dollar. So if mental states are abstract in the same way, they can still have causal relations to the physical world in the same way that the dollar does. Little tricky to do that analogy because in the dollar analogy, it, it, it's not the dollar is, is causing it as much as your mental perception. I'm not, I'm not sure if that extra step, you still have the mental causation because it's, it's my mentality that's, that's making me utter the words, thank you, and, and I'm interpreting that dollar. So the interpretation step is one, but the mental causation step, I don't think you've, you've answered that. So in that, in that example, you're absolutely right. But the same thing holds for the Coke machine. If I want the Coke to come out, there's no mental state in the Coke machine. Right. But I don't have to put in four quarters. I can put in two quarters, you know, four dimes right, and two right, nickels, right, right. right? There's all kinds of possible, right. but I have to put in a dollar. Right, 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 right. <laughs> right? Right, right, right. And so the Coke machine itself is going to react without the mental state. Right. Okay. So now I've caused a purely physical process. Uh, by an abstract concept. By an abstract concept. Because there's an algorithm right. in the machine that will interpret looking for a dollar's worth of value. Exactly. And it's, 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 uh, it's uh, in, in, instantiated in the Coke machine to get that dollar. Right. It's okay. a lot more. But, but the analogy to the mind then comes down right, to right. the fact that many people think of the mind as identical to a particular brain state. This mental state is identical to this particular brain state. And I don't want to say, no, it's like the relationship between the dollar and the four quarters. That same mental state could be instantiated in a lot of different brain states, what's called multiple realizability, right. 
In the same way that the dollar can be instantiated or realized in four quarters or 10 dimes or 20 nickels. And a lot of the experimental evidence in brain science is pointing exactly that direction, that the same mental state can be realized in the brain in different ways. We see that, for example, from plasticity. When someone uh, loses their hearing, then often the neurons that were used for hearing will be taken right, over right. and used for vision. Right, right. Well, that shows that vision can be instantiated in a number of different ways in different right. parts of the brain. And so if the brain is, is flexible in that way, or if mental states are multiply realizable in different brain states, then it really is like the dollar. Just like a dollar can be instantiated as four quarters, or as 10 dimes, or as 20 nickels, so this mental state can be instantiated in different brain states. And if that's true, then the model of the dollar causing the Coke or the person to say thank you is a lot like that mental state causing the physical state because it doesn't matter which particular instantiation it had. What matters is that this mental state did occur because it was instantiated one way or the other. So assuming that model of mental causation is correct, what then can we infer about causation in general? Well, the first thing I would infer is that the pool ball model is wrong. You don't always need this ball hitting that ball. That's not the way causation works, okay? The second thing that I would infer about causation is that causal relations are general relations. They hold not by virtue of this particular thing causing this particular thing, but rather a general property of this thing is causing a general property of that thing. And there's a law that connects the different properties at a certain level of generality. And that to understand any causal relationship, not just between the mind and the body, but between anything and anything else, the real trick is to get the right level of generality. You don't want to describe the cause in terms of four quarters or in terms of this particular brain state. You want to describe the cause at the right level of generality. And what I've been arguing is that the right level of generality in these cases is the abstract level of a dollar or this mental state.